here, Jonathan, are, is going to do our first, hopefully, of many, Kids, Movies, Parents, How They Work. That's the working title. That sucks. Well, we have I, another I, one. I thought you said you were going to call it, which I thought was brilliant, uh, Parental Guidance. Parental Well, let's take a look. I don't know if it's on the ready. We had it emailed, oh. if you guys have it. Guys, we might have a little something new here. There we go. Wow. <laughs> Look at little, little, boy, little Bill's got some issues. But little Joe is having a great old time. Well, here's the issue, though. I'm going to keep turning to Jonathan being like, what just happened? Because I'm not wearing my glasses. <laughs> you even needed them back then? Yeah. Uh, the and smile if, on Joanne's face is really wonderful. <laughs> I can't tell if you're lifting your arm up or if your back's crooked. Oh, yeah, I think that's just a crooked back. Yeah, well, actually, Jonathan doesn't look like he likes that one. But parental guidance requested. Some material may not be suitable for bored dads. There it is. Let it bathe over you. I'm taking requests for possible song titles. But, uh, Jonathan, we showed a clip at the beginning. They put a little uh, AI, my face on it, which I was not appreciating, um, of the under the sea moment in it. So take yep. us through it. This, is a, right. this, this one was a fan of the original. Hasn't seen this one. Ugh. Look, it, we are a few things. This is a Little Mermaid, obviously based on Hans Christian Andersen's uh, tale of uh, a mermaid falling in love with a Danish prince. Uh, Ooh, you know, we're immediately made aware that this is no longer uh, in, in Scandinavia area, but rather in the Caribbean, oh. which I think it makes a lot more sense. Uh, yes. You know, we've done a lot up in that area with Frozen and Frozen 2, and I think it makes more sense to, let's let's throw it into the Caribbean area. They don't actually say where we are, but it's pretty clear uh, that it's it's taken place. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, I, really. Just, I really don't like it at all. <laughs> it is very, that's alarming. So not two, but three new songs, Bill. Uh, there is Wild Uncharted Waters, which is sung by Ariel. There is Scuttlebutt, which is a rap that is done uh, by Scuttle, the uh, the bird. Uh, and then there is, uh, no, for the first time, which is Ariel, Wild Uncharted Waters is done by Eric, the prince. Uh, and his story is brought out a little bit further. Um, and then there's Scuttlebutt. Now I do I don't like remember to point out Scuttlebutt. Scuttlebutt. The bird. No, that's a new song. That's one of the new no, songs. No, but the, um, I don't remember the bird. So bird is Scuttle. It was this. It was a seagull originally. Now they've remade it, and it is now a northern gannet. And the reason why they do that is because a northern gannet can dive down to very deep waters, which explains in the movie why we see Scuttle going down very, very far without breathing quite a bit, but able to talk. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, again, with all of these scientifically. We need to make it real. <laughs> <laughs> I read a, a really wonderful article in Rolling Stone by Barry Levitt this morning um, regarding the Scuttlebutt. And the title of the article is uh, The Little Mermaid Rebook Remake Boasts One of the Worst Disney Songs Ever. Um, wow. And, I will say, for me, it was a downer. Um, it was, it's Lynn Manuel not being able to get out of his own way and really needing to have a rap song in the movie. Why does Lynn Manuel Miranda need to write music on every Disney movie? He's overworked. That's got to be part of it. He is a lyricist and he does a good job. The other two songs are definitely passable. The one by Ariel is actually good. Um, but and the, yeah, so he's a lyricist, but I, this is the idea of wanting to get a rap song and everything, I think, yeah. is a little too much. Um, the, the, but how much time does this add to a uh, you know an already long movie for? But they took out Le Poisson, which actually is one of my daughter and wife's favorite songs in the the original, he, he, he. which is the ha, chef. Ha, ha. It's so good, right? <laughs> Right. And what, one one way I heard it explained is that, you know, it's a part of the movie where the, the chef is killing fish and and boning them and things like that. And I think they just had a hard time figuring out how to do that with live characters. Oh, um, that makes sense. D disappointing. Yes. Um, but. Yes. So overall, I will say it was fine. Jim. I love this. Um, and next time, you know what we should do? We should come up with a rating system because that's good. And we'll come up with a pithy way of saying, worth it with the kids. I guess the best rating would obviously be, I would go and see this even if I were not with kids, which would sure would get bad stares. But um, well, if it was on a grading scale, uh, and keep in mind, my grading scale is different than everyone else's considering my GPAs. 
Um, <laughs> but I would give it, I'd give it a hot, a, a very solid C plus. And for me, that was very good in school. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I would take that in a heartbeat. Mom would put that on the fridge if we got that. With a little star on it that she would make herself. Disappointments. I did just want both your thoughts on this because, goddamn, man, it's just if if, if a movie, of a science fiction movie can think of it, just give it 10 or 20 years and it becomes a reality. But, and you'll already be thinking of movies like Aliens. There was another one recently with Chris Pratt and he wakes up your favorite. Jennifer Lawrence, and mm-hmm. it's the same thing where they're in this. A scientist have keyed on, on a group of neurons in the hypothalamus preoptic area, I pronounced that perfectly, by the way, of the brain involved in regulating body temperature and metabolism during hibernation. They then activated the neurons in mice using helmets to deliver ultrasonic pulses. Result? Body temperature dropped three degrees Celsius, heart rates fell by nearly half, and the body began using fat for energy rather than fat and carbohydrates. After 24 hours, the system was shut off and the mice woke up. The same thing worked on rats. Both animals do not hibernate. But now we have been able to induce it. And they're saying, through these rats... Next comes humans, possibly. Uh, they envision astronauts wearing a helmet-like device designed to target the hypothalamus region for inducing a hypothermia and hypometabolism state. Should have had you read this. The BBC digs into what the torpor-like state in humans would mean for space travel, and it uh, include the prevention of muscle loss for astronauts and huge reductions in the size of spacecraft needed for long journeys because of the amount of food could be reduced by 75%. Uh, This can also be used uh, to reduce the case of traumatic brain injury. If someone has cardiac arrest, you put them in this until you can get all the right things you can to help their heart, that kind of thing. Uh, This kind of made my head explode, and I'm not sure in a good way or a bad way. You're the smart one here. You tell me, should I be outraged or intrigued? Uh, Well, Joanne's the smart one, uh, but you certainly are the lowest on the totem pole. So... (laughs) I would think that if I wanted to hibernate, I would just have an AI and a soothing voice read your tweet stream, Bill, and that would put me out for quite some time. You know what? First the White Sox, and look at how delighted you've made her. I forgot how much I remember, love that. Remember the poll everyone said about that late-term thing on you. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> but, I mean, I don't know who first came up with it and whatever science fiction thing it was, but the whole thing about going way, huge distances in space and having everyone be in their little chamber – so as to sleep through it all. I, just the idea, well, the fact that this that could, part, that was part of Planet of the Apes, wasn't it? Where three believe, of them survived, was it? Or they were in hibernation and they came back. I think you're right. I think you're right. And certainly in Aliens. They've done that a lot of movies. Yes. They've done that a lot of movies. That's an old trope from the science fiction uh, movies. But, you know, you had the coma where they would do it in, in medical science as well. It was put out. But I, I don't, you know, I don't. I mean, you only have so much time on Earth. I mean, when they talk about hibernation, is your body still going to age? That's the question. I do wonder if we're going to get to the point where that could be a factor. And it would be as close to time travel as we could get because we could just put our uh, body in this type of hypothermic thing until we get the cure to whatever it is we've got, which it's going to make for a weird planet. But, I mean, that right there is mind-blowing. Well, that, that was one of the one of the... Claims made for cryogenics. I believe, yes. So you can still get frozen, though. And, and I would urge you to do so at your earliest convenience. Wow. Because you never know what can happen in this world. I do know what would happen. And it would be the same thing as Ted Williams. For future generations. They would, they'll, they'll be playing soccer with my head like they did with Ted Williams, and nothing will happen. I just worry about the thawing process because, truthfully, there is a correct way to defrost meat. And I'm one of those people who forgets to do it in time. <laughs> so I like, I well, run. Well, your mind goes you know, on I that. run the stuff under warm water, which you're not supposed to do. And I just worry that my loved ones, when thawing me out, would not do it correctly. And I, <laughs> I would end up some like gray color or like shriveled mess or something. So not it far off. It would be off. very difficult. It would be very difficult to feel like, say you're John Boehner. And you have that year-round tan despite the fact you're in Ohio. And so <laughs> you get, if you hibernate yourself, what are they going to do about the tan? Are they going to turn you like one of those wieners in, yes. in the gas station, one of those grills? 
And then can they freeze you again? Or would they ruin it if a space alien decides to use you as an hors d'oeuvre? Yeah. What's going to happen? The so wiener times. thing really hits home because the more time I spend using the Wi-Fi at Bryant Park, the more I look like that very 7-Eleven wiener. Just rolling and never being yeah. bought. And yeah, yeah just, ugh. In fact, even the, the clerk at the front is like, you don't want that. Oh, yeah. Someone no, no, no. <laughs> Sir, that's not jerky. That is indeed a hot dog. Yes. Uh, I do not. I, I feel that I'm heading towards that direction. 